Welcome to this next <laughs> oh, contribution to the Cloud oh, Foundry in the Enterprise here. track here. Um, this time it's not actually a talk, but rather a panel discussion. And could I ask the panelists to quickly raise their hand? Um, so we have, <laughs> not now, when I introduce you. <laughs> Might be <laughs> obvious. <laughs> we have Vitislav Porta from Energy. Then we have Kerstin Dar from Pivotal. Then we have Jonathan Vital from Wipro. You're replaced yeah. by our colleague Suresh. All yeah. right. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> uh, then we have Kerstin Schultz from Energy. Jürgen Blooming from Energy. Hi. And Stefan Träger also from Energy. Was not able to make it. Was not yeah. Made. Okay. All right. Good. The um, title of the panel is Empowering Growth in E-Mobility Using Cloud Foundry. So take it away. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are here to introduce uh, you our personal experience we have made in last year when implementing Pivotal Cloud Foundry platform and how we support this e-mobility business. Uh, short introduction of what is Energy. Energy is the utility company, so we are uh, distributing energy and selling energy, gas or electricity. We operate in uh, eight to ten countries um, in in Europe and. Uh, we were here a year ago on this Cloud Foundry Summit in Basel, uh, and we made a uh, kind of commitment to ourselves, uh, because it was just fresh start of our project, that if we make it happen and we build up the platform and put some applications uh, to life, that we come here uh, in the one year again and share uh, what we have learned uh, by doing this and what's ahead. So we are here to share uh, and to make uh, or give you some potential benefits which you can reuse uh, in your life. So how we started with Pivotal Cloud Foundry, even a bit ahead of that uh, summit, uh, summit um, we, we have uh, done a short project with Pivotal Labs and that was kind of helping us to, to get convinced uh, the management of the company that this platform makes sense. We are using Pivotal Cloud Foundry, not the open source one. And uh, here with me are guys who has been introduced by names, but anyway, I would like to uh, ask them if they can say a couple of uh, words about themselves. So starting with a lady here. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Kerstin, Kerstin Daher, and I work for Pivotal and I'm the account manager and was so fortunate to um, be with Energy on the first steps of their exciting journey. Hello, my name is uh, Jurgen Blüming. I'm project manager for e-mobility, and we started the project uh, on Cloud Foundry to be able to scale uh, together with the growing business and uh, having more charging points in the future. My name is Christian Schulz. I'm the product manager in the Energy Group for uh, Cloud Foundry. Um, some more information: we have two foundations, one running in uh, AWS. And uh, for data security reasons and so on, I mean, we are from Germany. Um, we have another foundation in our data center running on OpenStack. Right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It is Suresh Guli. I joined as a platform engineer last year, November, and I'm from the Wipro. So we are. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a combination of uh, mostly all of us who were involved in the project uh, from different parties, because we in Energy work very closely with partners. Um, when we introduced you, uh, Kerstin, what we are going to do, so how we are going to build up the platform team consisting of uh, multiple companies, what were your first thoughts about that? Yeah, thanks for this important question, um, Vitek. Well, when we started last year, after Energy had decided to go with the platform, we of course started to discuss how we would implement it and um, our, our dojo approach to help the customer implement the platform. And then we, of course, discussed the ideal setup of the platform product team. And the prevailing pattern of uh, the setup of such a team, if we look across our existing customer base and look at those customers who are the most <coughs> successful, the pattern we see is that those who build this critical team to the digital transformation out of people from their own company, those are the ones who are the most successful. And, well, this is for two reasons, because um, when you build such a critical kernel of the digital success and transformation, you want to make sure that you have the, the knowledge built up with your own employees, ideally, 
And then the second one is that you are already embarked on a journey with a lot of challenges and obstacles, right? And then if you add extra complexity, um, you, you might want to avoid it, if possible. But then reality kicks in, and what we see is that in, in a large number of, of the German accounts, there are really intense, really, sorry, the technology is leaving. There are intense relationships between the accounts and, and the SIs or, or partners, mm -hmm. right? And um, we have to be flexible and we have to adjust to the, the given situations. And um, we will he hear about this going forward, but yes, you are right. Okay. In the beginning, we were skeptical and um, um, if this could work. Okay, thanks for, for that uh, share. It was quite fair open and open. Uh, then the next question is logically to Christian, if you can share how it was then in reality after that starting point, sure, sure. The starting situation. Yeah, yeah, fair question. I mean, in the beginning it was, of course, a, a cultural thing, uh, working together with, uh, with one of our service partners, an Indian company, the Vipro one. Um, we followed, uh, as we learned in the dojo, we followed the methods of, of, of working together, um, which were provided by Pivotal. And yeah, it took some weeks, I think, but uh, overall now we act as one team. Um, there is no barrier between us, I think. We are working very, very trustly together and um, it's fun. Good. And uh, if I ask you, Suresh, then uh, when you joined that team, you also had some expectations and also some history. Can you compare uh, how this uh, is to the previous engagements? Yep, sure. So when, we, when I, I joined as a platform engineer to the team, the um, one shock first I got is, um, there is no ITL process. So <laughs> I came from the background of a service provider, customer kind of a relationship person, and mainly coming from the infrastructure background. And that was the first shock to me, and then um, to get adjusted and uh, coming to the agile methodologies and uh, adjusting to the team and understanding how the value is getting delivered to the customer in an incremental way. Uh, it took Time, but um, later point of time we got adjusted. Now it is like a, we are in a relation of partners rather than service provider come customers. And um, it's a very good experience so far from past one year. And um, we really like the agile methodologies and follow the uh, scrums. And mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, we are on the journey of DevOps starting. Probably we'll have a good a um, uh, good, um, no, what you say, uh, good success stories on the next summit yeah. and the DevOps and uh, how we performed on that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, question to you, Jürgen. Uh, when we started with the platform, we uh, obviously have needed uh, uh, some project who will use it, who will be the first uh, user. Uh, we started with quite significant because we took the most important uh, project running in the, in the retail part of our company. Uh, who is, which is managed by, by Jürgen. Uh, after we introduced you the platform and what all uh, is going to happen, what was your expectation and uh, how it was in real, if you look back like those 10 months? To be honest, um, we started working together, I think, in October last year, and we were uh, struggling with a lot of topics. So first of all was about uh, coming from a waterfall situation, working agile, in, in skilled agile how to get people onboarded yeah, on an, uh, working on a platform as a solution uh, uh, situation yeah, to start developing there and to, uh, to develop it and deploy. Um, but also uh, how could we achieve that we can run 24 seven yeah, end to end processes for uh, immobility. Those challenges we had and we didn't know exactly at that moment how to, uh, how to do, but we were very pleased that there was a platform as a solution um, uh, already yeah, being designed and uh, not there yet. Mm -hmm. So we went a long way. Yeah? We had a lot of uh, expectations that everything would work. And um, we had to figure out how and also to learn from those uh, situations. And uh, I can say yeah, my expectations were about uh, fast development, fast deployments, uh, easy configuring uh, stages and uh, uh, having databases uh, available very soon. And that's all promises we see in practice. Yeah? It really works. And um, so we have currently six uh, development teams uh, running parallel to each other. Uh, based on the domain-driven design, we uh, make a decomposition of our scope 
and so that teams can um, no, save of 95% work independently from each other. The platform mm -hmm. and its uh, features supports us there. Very good. Yeah, having a database, it can be done in five minutes or whatever, a new database. Our experience in the old world of energy was four, four till five months it could uh, take. So we are moving much, much more faster currently in development. Our next uh, goals and mm -hmm. next challenges are about uh, having a maintenance proof uh, situation. And I'm so happy uh, to work together with uh, people like uh, Christian that we can work together on that. Um, not so easy topic from my experience, but that we uh, step by step we come further and it takes time. And my expectation was it will f go fast and I learned uh, myself as a project manager a uh, plan for that. Uh, take time for that. Perhaps take a year at least. Uh, to overcome all the trouble that you can have and have a very stable 24-7 supported uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. To summarize that maybe, uh, if I elaborate some lesson learned out of that, uh, we were quite over-optimist in the beginning, yeah? that things will just go smoothly because uh, if you read any product description then you have a feeling that everything will be there in a month. Uh, and of course, this is not true because this is a long time that you need to build up the team. The thing, people need to learn, they, they need to practice, they need to fail sometimes and then uh, start again. Uh, and doing that uh, in, in progress with the project, uh, it's, uh, it's sometimes uh, just taking a bit longer. So the lessons learned is uh, uh, if you start with projects like that, um, drive these expectations uh, rather lower than higher uh, because then uh, you will get a better feedback also from, from business guys. Question to Suresh, uh, or to Kerstin first, uh, because um, we are in IT quite used to build services. Yeah? So, so we define some scope, we define some parameters, price, we put it somewhere to a service catalog and then we are basically done because the service is up and running and uh, no, then we have also some procedures on how to change it later, etc. and troubleshoot. Uh, but Pivotal came uh, to us uh, with a different approach and they told us like it's, it should not be a service, it should rather be a product. And uh, can you explain us uh, once again what, what's the difference between that having and running a service and, and product? What's yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, yeah, at Pivotal when working with our customers, we are trying to establish a notion that the Cloud Foundry is not um, just a infrastructure you install and then it's done and you go and we rather try to work with our customers to to install a notion that the the platform should be treated like a software product right and we help to establish a platform product team the name tells it that really treats the platform as an internal product that you market internally you develop it as a as a product team and then you reach out on a regular basis to your internal customers, to, to the, 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 the application teams, right? And you listen to them and you do market research and you ask what is it, what you need, so that you succeed with the business goals that you, you want to fulfill, right? And that's an, that's an ongoing basis, it's never finished. Yeah. So it's really a software product that will be worked on continuously, the platform. And um, yeah. yeah, that was a lesson to us because uh, by implementing the platform and passing through all the trainings, uh, some people in the company might think, okay, now it's done. Yeah? You have the platform, so you can just put as much as possible on it and uh, you do not need to work further. But the learning was, uh, no, it was a starting point. So we just have a platform and now we have to learn how to get the best out of it. Uh, and that's uh, one of the outcomes of, of this year's journey. Um, when I ask you, Suresh, when, when you look back for the, your first day with the team yeah, and you somehow uh, go through all that, uh, all, all that year, uh, can you share with, with uh, guys uh, and with us here something what you would definitely not repeat again and something maybe what were the uh, bright spots or something what we can take like, uh, yes, everyone should do it like this because it's just a good idea? Yep, uh, sure. So um, there are more, more and more bright spots than... Um, um, something which I can do it differently. So f uh, first one is about the knowledge of the platform as a service and platform as a product. Uh, so Cloud Foundry is a best enabler for applications to deliver their, uh, develop their applications and go to the market very fast compared to the uh, 
uh, what, waterfall um, method if they follow it, that takes time. That is one part, and the technology point of view now um, I'm into the another level of uh, cloud native applications and uh, talking about the uh, 12 factor applications and uh, what are the best practices about Cloud Foundry and the platform and the implementing on the AWS and OpenStack. Those are the uh, bright spots for me. And uh, yeah, it, doing differently, that is, um, I'm, I'm just thinking there is uh, nothing much which I can tell about it. Okay. Yeah. So maybe we can try with Christian the yeah. same question. If you have a look back, something to share what was not so great and something what was really good. Yeah, I think it's important to know, or this, is, this was our experience, it's easy to run PCF uh, in the cloud, for example. We have no problems with our AWS environment, it runs like hell. Um, but building up your own cloud in a data center, which is owned by another company, this is really um, a, hard, a hard job. Uh, also the de decision to run it on OpenStack, not on, on VMware. But it runs, but I think it was, uh, yeah, it was a big challenge to have an application which is very, very demanding, like uh, um, e-mobility application mm -hmm. during the implementation phase in the data center on the platform already. I think I would change that and deliver a complete platform or a, a more complete platform to you and would have started with uh, smaller teams. The on premise. Yeah, we have just learned that maybe the platform will never be done. Yeah, because yeah, so it's, it's, it's living, but there are some, I think it's not, it's not always a technical point. Uh -huh. Often you have uh, things around the platform. Zuresh said that, hey, ITIL, you need processes. This is a must to drive a platform. It is infrastructure related, and uh, this should be um, finalized. Okay, and some bright spots then? From your AWS. Early? No, it was um, it was uh, it, it was bright spot was of, <laughs> uh, bright spot is of course um, um, working together in the way we work together as a team, and um, beside all the challenges and I said that before there was a lot of fun and this is very important and this uh, makes this uh, success like it is. Okay, so just having a fun is a quite essential element of those journeys. Uh, the same question to you, Jürgen. Um, yeah. From the project perspective, yeah. Yeah. So um, what 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 we changed eh, during our journey eh, was um, first we were considering the platform as just uh, being there and we could use it and benefit from it and if it's not working we push on eh, Christian, but uh, we stopped doing that. Eh? We tried to st we tried to stop doing that because it Thank won't you. help. <laughs> eh? <laughs> and we learned from that to go together that the way, yeah. eh? together from, from development perspective, business perspective, and also from platform perspective, to learn from each other. It's, it's, it's not independent from each other. That's eh, the best takeaway I can give to you. And, uh, but on the other hand, I've seen, I've never seen uh, eh, development and deployments going so fast. To be honest, we had the platform. First team started uh, in the beginning of December last year. After some two weeks or whatever, they deployed already the first applications, first, yeah, first small applications, but they were able to do that and they were surprised themselves also how fast it's go. Mm -hmm. And it's so nice to see you people being happy. Yeah. Good to learn. Unexpected that we are very well in time, so maybe we can give an opportunity also to you guys if you have some questions to us. Um, sorry, I'm going to repeat that. Um, so we, at Swisscom, we just concluded a, a migration of our managed um, Cloud Foundry product away from OpenStack to VMware. Why did you, on the other hand, why did you go for OpenStack as an infrastructure? <clears throat> it was, uh, I think it was uh, uh, around licenses. I mean, usually we use uh, VMware in our data center, but there was a decision. Uh, um, to go with OpenStack. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's, it's when we started, it was delivered as a product, OpenStack as a product from our partner, uh, Vipro. And um, yeah, so we took it. All right, thanks. Yeah. And it runs. No question? So I don't see any from your faces if the story resonates or not. 
Uh, but basically, this was uh, uh, what we have prepared to share with you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.